Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Thanks so much for dropping by. This soap is my entry for the January 2020 Soap Challenge hosted by Amy Warden. For this month's challenge we had to produce a landscape design and for the advanced category we needed to have at least five elements. Now an element would be an embed or a layer, something like that. The inspiration for my design came from this picture that I found of the view of Saturn taken from its moon Titan. Now I'd wanted to do some sort of solar systems planet type soap, but because of the requirements of the challenge where we had to produce a landscape, I knew I had to do the view looking from the surface of one planet out to another. After a chat and some soapy planning with a friend of mine, we discussed the fact that we'd seen lots of solar system galaxy type soaps, but we'd never seen anyone attempt to do a ringed planet. So therefore that seemed like the perfect challenge. Now the picture I've got is a little bit muted in its colours and a bit monochrome. So I've tweaked with those a little bit and I'm really happy with the result. Come on, let's go and make some soap. I'm going to start my soap by making an embed a day before I actually pour the main body of the soap. So I'm going to be making the planet first of all and the colours that I'm going to be using are some activated charcoal, magic yellow from mineral makeup ingredients, antique silver from Mica Mama and clementine pop from You Make It Up. I always pre-disperse all of my markers in a little bit of olive oil before I start. I haven't actually mixed up any activated charcoal here because I'm only going to use it if I need to darken something up a little bit. I've already made up some soap batter and divided it evenly into three jugs and I'm just going to add those individual colours, pop some fragrance oil in and then get ready to pour the embed for my planet. The fragrance oil I'm using is Galaxy of Stars from Sensory Perfection in the UK. Now typically when you make a planet or a moon type embed, you normally use some sort of pipe or column mould to make it. Now that's not going to work for me here because I actually want some stripes to go across the surface of Saturn and pouring into some sort of column mould is just going to muddle stuff up like an in the pot swirl. So therefore what I'm doing is I'm doing like a thin line design pouring down the side of my mould. I've actually put a divider down the middle there because I don't want to fill the whole mould up. I just want to make a big enough embed just to make my planet. I also made up a couple of extra small batches of soap, one in yellow and one in grey, to help me form the rings of satin when I put it together. The next day I took my stripy line block of soap and I've just used a stainless steel cutter to cut out some planet shapes in the size that I want. Now ideally I'd have loved to have done this as a long column, but to get the stripes and to actually be able to cut it out reliably, it just wasn't going to happen. So I had to unfortunately stick with doing it in smaller pieces. Next I needed to slice the tops off of the little planets and start to make the rings. So I had some nice smooth rolled out yellow soap dough and that was going to be one of the first rings and I'm just going to put some orange soap dough in the middle of it to give that inner ring. And then once I've got all that smoothed in, I then plane off a bit of the grey soap dough I make and I try and keep that in a nice solid piece as much as possible because I want it to be nice and smooth and then just wrap that round the whole lot to form the last outer ring. I 
I've not got it shown on the video here, but after I've done that, I then stuck the top of the planet back on. I just use distilled water as glue and then leave everything to set overnight so it becomes nice and firm. Oh, goodness me, that's satin done. That is, I must admit, the closest I've ever come to throwing a piece of soap dough out of the window. Anyway, <laughs> let's carry on. So I'm now going to move on and make some other elements of the landscape and I'm going to start off by making some of these collections of rocks that we've got on the lower part of the landscape scene. I've actually already got this brown and black soap dough that I had left over from another project so therefore this will be great for mottling it around to give me a nice sort of rocky effect. So I'm just going to roll it out and squeeze it um, until it gets to the right length I need for my embed. And once I've done that, I'm just going to pop it in a little bit of cling wrap just to save any sticking and then sort of dimple it all along with this, I don't know what tool this is, it's this sort of a round-ended plastic thingy, um, just to give it a nice craggy rock effect. And then once that's done, I'm just going to repeat it for the other two rock formations. And then using the same method, but just a different colour soap dough, I'm going to create the rocks that are at the back of the picture, just below satin. The only difference this time being that I'm just going to make an impression all the way along down the centre, so that I've got two peaks on this rock formation. Okay, so last embed, I now want to make a collection of smaller rocks that we'd find sort of at the bottom of the bigger mountain areas and round the edge of the sea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my garlic press here so that I can squeeze out little bits of different coloured grey, brown, black soap dough and shave them off really quite short so therefore they become little tiny bits of rock. Bit sticky initially so I'm going to leave them to dry out a bit and then just keep mucking around with them and breaking them all up and shaking them so I get lots of individual bits and pieces. Okay so let's pour the main body of the soap. So I'm going to start off with the foreground, this fairly light area, and then I'm going to put that first embed in. So just mixing up a small amount of batter that I'm going to need for that area. The fragrance oil I'm using is called Galaxy of Stars and it comes from Sensory Perfection. And then colour wise I want to keep this fairly light so the bulk of my colour is going to be Golden Shimmer from Mica Mama. I'm going to add some little tiny flecks of antique silver from Mica Mama as well just so it's not a dead flat surface and then a little bit of just plain soap batter again just to add some highlights so that we haven't just got one complete solid colour. Oh rats, it looks like I forgot to press record as I started to pour this layer. All I've done is I've poured in some of the base with the golden shimmer and then I'm just really going to alternate with some of that antique silver and some of that plain batter that I've got just to get some movement and some highlights into this first layer, just gradually building up so it comes to the top of that first embed. And then just starting to add in some of those little mini rocks that we've done. So starting off with some of the dark grey ones and then going to pour in some of the black on the top. I'm going to try and push them down into the batter um, a little bit. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some very fluid batter on top because what I need to make sure is that they're fully covered in batter and they're not going to be loose and fall out of the soap. And also I don't want to create any air holes. Thank you. 
So then I just left that for a while so it got um, reasonably firm and then I'm just going to go in and texture the surface so it's nice and uneven. Now I've propped my mould up on a tea towel to give us a little bit of an angle and we're going to start to pour those big dark rocks to the side. I'm going to be using chestnut brown from You Make It Up and brushed copper from Mica Mama. Now looking at the picture, the shadows around the rocks make the rocks lighter at the bottom and then darker towards the top. So I'm going to be doing sort of an in the pot swirl so I get some nice movement and changes in the rocks and I'm actually going to darken it as I get through to the top. And then moving on to this sort of middle light layer that we've got and it's basically the same as the first layer I did so we'll just whip through this fairly quickly. I've added in some more of those tiny little rubbly rocks into the layer and pushed them down because now it's time to do that second set of big rocks and I wanted to have that sort of rubbly effect at the bottom of them. And I'm just going to pour that second set of rocks exactly the same way as I did for the first. And then of course you can never have too many mini rubbly rocks so in go another load of those and again just making sure that I'm going to incorporate them well so I'm not going to create any dry bits that will fall out or any air gaps. So now it's time to move on to the sea and I'm not sure if you can actually see in the mould that well but I have actually gone through and scraped out parts of the previous layers and I've tried to make the sides underneath the rocks um, so that they are quite lumpy and bumpy so it actually looks more realistic. I don't want just a flat side for the sea. Then I'm going to fill it with some sea colour. I'm using blueberry from You Make It Up and I'm also going to be adding some white, just some titanium dioxide to give some sort of effect of waves. And then after a few more rubbly rocks, I'm just going to put in that last embed. Remember the lighter coloured rocks that we've got that are just underneath satin. And then finally we're on to our last layer where we're going to bring in the sky and then eventually sit in that satin embed and then flow some more orangey coloured sky around it. And then just finishing off the top with a simple swirl pattern. And as normal, I'll cover this and wrap it with some cling wrap. And I will see pop it in the oven, turn the oven off as soon as it goes in and leave it to gel overnight. 
I left the soap in the mould for about 36 hours. The main reason for that was just so that it was good lighting for when I cut them for the video. And I am really pleased how the designs come out. All those elements seem to be showing up really well. Now you will find that as this dries out a little bit, so within the next day or so, those elements will actually start to stand out a lot bolder. And the landscape scene should come through really well. So I'll just leave you to watch the cutting of the bars and then I'll finish off with some final pictures of the soap. I really hope you like this soap. I think it's one of my favourites that I've done so far and I hope you enjoyed the video too. If you did like it, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? You can do that by clicking this icon that's coming up on the screen now. And if you'd like to know whenever I upload a new video, why not click the notification bell? Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you all have a brilliant day. Happy soaping!